Hi there. It's Kevin and Ralph at the camera. And um, we're baking on this uh, cottage morning here in Lexington, Michigan. And uh, what we decided to do is uh, we we're going to have a crowd gang coming over for dinner tonight. And so we want to do something special for dessert. So we are reviving an old recipe from the 50s called tomato soup cake. And uh, you may be thinking, what? Yeah, tomato soup cake. It's uh, probably Andy Warhol's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Or was. So, and Ralph, I want to thank you for putting a little Peggy Lee on the hi-fi today. You know, I, I realized that that's an artist that we haven't really used his background music and uh, ladies and gentlemen it's one of Kevin's favorite artists and f f if not the f his favorite artist he was the Probably my favorite weren't you the president of her fan club at one point well no not quite uh, but I uh, I think it's appropriate too because we got a tomato soup cake and Peggy Lee was one hot tomato That's let me show sure. you so here's what we're going to start with um, a stick of butter or margarine and one can just the standard ten and three quarter ounce can of tomato soup and we've got Campbell's here and what we're going to do is we're going to beat the tomato soup and uh, butter together first so we're going to get okay Speaking of first, this is a first for us, so we hope it comes out really good. I'm sure. I've not well. made this cake before, but it's pretty colored. So we're going to kind of cream this together here. It's sort of a spice cake. Um, other ingredients include allspice, cinnamon, cloves, sugar, of course. Hopefully, flour. hopefully we'll keep the cloves to a minimum because I'm not a big fan. Only oh, a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Oh, okay. I don't really mind cloves except that they tend to overpower. I think the flavor of cloves seems to overpower a lot of food that I've had it in, uh, or, or baked goods, cookies, and things like that. Yeah, you know, a little cloves can go a long way. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the soup and the butter. Butter kind of put together here. Now we're going to add two eggs. So just large eggs. Always good when baking to put your eggs at room temperature. And a quarter cup of water. I thought you were going to say to never put your eggs in one basket. Well, that too. And as always we got the whole recipe at Cavalcade of Food. But So we're going to get this blended up and then we're going to come back and put our dry ingredients together and add that. So come on right on back. Okay, so we've got um, our dry ingredients which we're going to sift together. This is two cups of all-purpose flour which I have previously sifted. We're going to put that in our sifter here. We're going to add to that our spices, cinnamon, Table, uh, teaspoon of cinnamon, teaspoon and a half of allspice, and a, a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. You're going to put in our leaveners, which includes a teaspoon of baking soda and four teaspoons of baking powder. And then finally, we have a cup and a third of sugar. Get that in there too. Quite a full sifter. Let me sift some of this down. The rest of our sugar in. So this will just kind of blend all of our dry ingredients together. I think this is why cooking, um, baking, some of these things are so intimidating for me because I see you doing this and I think I'd have to be an octopus and have like eight pairs of hands to do this if I was by myself. Oh, you could do it. It just takes, you know, it just, you have to just sort of think things through and 
you know, you I'm not good at that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but kidding. that's what a recipe is for. So we're gonna gradually beat this into our eggs, soup, margarine, um, and water mixture here. Okay, so we've got all of our dry ingredients in. Keep scraping it. You have to admit, another pair of hands right now would be helpful. Well, I could have used a stand mixer, which would have freed up both of my hands. Ah. Uh, but I just didn't feel like it. So I wonder if this tomato soup cake is going to have a flavor of tomato soup or if that's just sort of a foundation and it's going to be, like you said, more of a spice cake. It is more of a spice cake, but you can see the color. It's sort of um, kind of almost a what salmony, uh, what you would call it, a little on the brown side, reddish brown. Yes, from the spices. But I hope it does have a tomato soup flavor because I think that's what made it sound interesting to me. Is that it was, uh, you know, there was a time when tomatoes were almost exotic in cooking, weren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. What did they call it? Love apples, I think, or something like that. But um, I don't know quite why but anyways um, this is a recipe from the 50s of course Campbell soup no surprise really promoted this recipe so we're going to continue beating this and then we're going to come on back we are getting our pans prepared here this is a way that I grease and flour pans I take a little square of wax paper. Cake pans. Yeah, cake pans. And I take that little square of wax paper and I use it as an applicator. So you just tore that off of a regular yeah. roll of mm -hmm. wax just, paper? Yeah, I just folded it up. Oh, that's interesting. So, you know, sometimes uh, I've tried just spraying the pans with Pam and then putting flour in it. It's too wet. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for me anyways. So we've got the pans greased, then we just, you take a little bit of your flour. Where'd you pick up that little trick? Um, I, think my, I think my mom actually used to do it that way. So now we've got our flour. Of course, you know, you notice I'm doing this over the sink for a reason, because it does, you can make a real mess. Oh. So this is getting our sides floured. Nice okay. tricks, I like this. So here we go. Now our pan is ready. So we have two of these. Greased and floured, ready to go. We will divide our batter. Yeah, it's definitely got a, I can't really determine what that color would be called, but it's uh, like a pinkish brown. Mm -hmm. So here's our two eight inch pans. What's that you're doing? This helps to get the air bubbles out and also just sort of evenly distributes our batter. batter. Okay. Batter up. In the oven they go. 350 degrees. And oh, we'll say anywhere between 25 and 30 minutes. It has been uh, about 30 minutes. And oh, they smell good. Oh, wow. And here they are. Are you giving them a little bounce test? Yeah, they spring back, so that means that they are ready to come out. They've been in, like I said, for about a half hour, 350 degrees. They're also starting to pull away from the sides of the pan, which is another good way to tell. Your cake is done. Kevin's a real perfectionist. He's been known to toss cakes in the trash that didn't <laughs> rise properly. Don't laugh, it's true, and I've been known to true. dig in there, so he, he'll pour garbage on top of them so I won't dig in the trash. Well, if anything of mine ever comes out good, it's because I've done it ten times where it didn't come out good, so we learn by our mistakes. Well, plus so, you have high standards. So we're going to let these things cool now, um, and it'll take, you know, a while. We'll let them cool in the pans about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll take them out and let them cool on the rack, and then we will um, proceed to frost this cake with a cream cheese frosting. It's going to be great. Tomato soup cake. So I've got eight ounces of cream cheese in the bowl here 
Uh, it's been softened. It's I left it out for about a half hour or so. It's a warm one today, so it didn't take long. And I just put in two tablespoons of milk. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just work this together here. And get this nice and soft. Once I get the uh, cream cheese creamed, as it were, then what we're going to do is we're going to add in our vanilla and powdered sugar. Okay. What if you wanted to make it a crazy flavor, like uh, use an almond extract or butterscotch? Or you could, but I mean, not everything's compatible with cream cheese, which is sort of... Oh, I find that hard to believe. I know, but you know, sort of has that sour, creamy... Yeah, I... Okay, we've got a ya. teaspoon of vanilla in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to gradually add in our powdered sugar. This is one pound. So, um, it's an entire box of powdered sugar, which they sell in a one pound box. I don't buy it that way. I buy it in big bags and just, we a have box. a scale and we just measure out a pound. So, you see the vanilla kind of darkened it a little bit. But we're just going to keep working this cream cheese frosting in. And once we get all the um, powdered sugar incorporated, we'll come back and start frosting. All right. Here our cake uh, that is cooled. I just did a quick little brush of some of the crumbs. Let me brush them off. Yeah. Just okay. give them the brush. Yeah. What we're going to do is, I don't have a cake flipper. They make things for that. And I just use two spatulas. We're going to put our bottom layer on our cake plate and take it over here. Now, a trick that I learned a long time ago so that you don't get icing on your cake plate is to just put little strips of wax paper under your cake, just under it. Oh, okay. Okay? And so um, that way you don't have to try to clean mm -hmm. the cake plate afterwards. So, there we go. It helps you, it allows you to become as sloppy as you want. Yeah, we try not to be too sloppy, but you know, stuff happens. So, here's our icing or frosting for our middle layer. Now, I'm going to come and get our top layer here. Cake. If I can get under it. There we go. And not drop it in transit. Oh my goodness. There we go. It's like making a giant... Um, it's like a hamburger, doesn't it? It looks like a hamburger, but I'm thinking it reminds me of a giant like hostess cake or what are those things with the, all the layers and like um, a little Debbie or something. So now we have our cream cheese top. And you can see with the wax, little wax paper there, um, I'm not too concerned about getting frosting on the plate because it'll be easy enough to remove. So the wax paper just pulls away without making it messy? Yeah, you just pull the wax paper out. I so I gotta see my guess. Uh, and we just keep going around and around until we uh, get all the way around the cake. Gotcha. So we'll come on back after we're all done with the sides here and see how it looks. So here it is. Our tomato soup cake. Sure looks nice. Uh, with cream cheese frosting. So I think you bring that to the table and you get smiles all the way around. It'll be a moist spice cake with just a hint of tomato flavor. Something very unique and interesting. A real blast from the past. So thanks for being a part of this tomato soup cake recipe. See you next time.